Good evening. Over the past 72 hours, you will have seen and heard a great deal in the news about a variant of the COVID-19 virus that is causing concern. The name of that variant is Omicron. It was first detected in South Africa, with the news first emerging on Wednesday. Despite rapid action by governments around the world to prevent the spread of Omicron, primarily through travel bans, cases have quickly emerged across the globe, including three cases in the United Kingdom. Now, we are currently aware of 22 individuals who have travelled to the island and were in southern Africa in the past 10 days. All 22 people have been contacted and those still on the island have agreed to undergo testing. The test results that we have received back so far are all negative for COVID-19. New COVID variants have always been a concern and something that public health and governments or agencies around the world have been monitoring very closely since the pandemic began. New variants come about from natural mutations of the COVID-19 virus. These mutations can affect how transmissible the virus is, how likely someone is to become seriously ill, and, crucially, how effective the current COVID-19 vaccines are in offering protection. We have seen this already during the pandemic, with the Delta variant becoming dominant over the Alpha, Beta and Gamma variants. We have always said that the emergence of a new mutation could be a potential trigger point, meaning we have to act and take steps to protect our community. There is still much we do not know about the Omicron variant. The most crucial is that question about how effective the vaccine will be in offering us protection. The greatest concern is that the virus has mutated to such an extent that our immune systems, trained by the vaccine, no longer recognise the virus and no longer trigger an immune response. This sort of variant is known as vaccine escape variant. Early evidence suggests there may be a higher reinfection risk with Omicron, but there is still so much we do not know. This morning, I convened a meeting of the National COVID Response Group, followed by a meeting of the Council of Ministers. We discussed the developments around the globe in response to Omicron, particularly the UK, I examined the limited but growing evidence available and considered what potential measures we may need to bring in here on the island to protect our community. It was clear that whilst there are still so many unknowns about Omicron, it appears to have a large number of mutations, which is a concern. It may be several weeks before scientists have the answers we need on the exact nature of the threat this variant poses. Despite this, the Council of Ministers were mindful of the need for a proportionate response. We have determined that, given the uncertainty surrounding this new variant, we should now raise the island to a heightened state of awareness. We will also introduce some new measures for the greater protection of public health on the island, whilst the proper assessments are being made of Omicron. As Omicron has not yet been detected on the island, we assess the greatest risk at present to be from those arriving on our shores. Therefore, there are two important policy changes that the Council of Ministers are supporting. Firstly, all international travellers who are fully vaccinated arriving from outside the common travel area, that is anywhere outside of the UK, Ireland, Jersey and Guernsey, must self-isolate and have a PCR test 48 hours after arriving in the Isle of Man. They must remain in self-isolation until they have received the result back. If they are not fully vaccinated, they will still be required to undergo the seven-day isolation period. Secondly, all travellers from within the common travel area, regardless of their vaccination status, will have to commit now to undertaking a lateral flow test within 12 hours of arrival in the Isle of Man. All arrivals from within the common travel area will be required to make clear a statement as to their intent and understanding of this new testing requirement on their landing form, and we will develop a facility for them to let us know when they have undertaken the test. These measures will come into force from 4am on Tuesday the 30th of November. 
These two measures should now act as an additional barrier to entry of COVID and particularly Omicron. But we must also now also take further measures as a community to help mitigate against unwarranted effects as it remains likely that Omicron will arrive on the island sooner rather than later. Earlier this month, I set out a COVID-19 winter framework for the island, which established three alert levels and introduced varying levels of likely response from the government. I am today confirming, confirming that we are raising our status under this framework from level one to alert level two. This means that we are asking and increasing national mitigations. So these national mitigations will be now that those who are uh, undertaking uh, travel on public transport will be required and mandated to wear a mask. Those who are visiting a health centre or health setting will be mandated to wear a mask. And we are saying to everybody that we are now expecting uh, you to wear a mask in public settings, particularly on retail premises and in school settings. <clears throat> I also want to tell you um, that we will be increasing the booster programme, uh, the vaccine rollout programme, and I must say to you and once again emphasise that vaccines and the booster programme are providing our best defence against the virus. Thank you. I'm now happy to take questions from the media and joining me today uh, on Zoom is Dr. Henrietta Hewitt, um, uh, who will be happy to take any questions. So can I ask first, please, for uh, Leanne Cook at 3FM. Minister, my first question, what's the advice or guidance for those who arrive on island from outside the common travel area, but before the measures come into force at 4am on Tuesday, November the 30th? Well, when you arrive from outside the uh, common travel area, then uh, we are asking that you take the same precautions that we are, are recommending to everybody and that um, if you're coming from an international a country, that you do uh, take at the very minimum before these come into uh, play a lateral flow test. I think throughout uh, all, all these measures now, um, we are asking everybody to raise their awareness um, and particularly to be responsible uh, in whatever situation they find themselves. I refer particularly to the lateral flow tests and ours being a uh, major uh, support uh, crutch, if you like, to ensuring that people are looking after themselves and are uh, making sure that they themselves are aware whether they are carrying um, COVID. And I'm also uh, asking now, particularly with the uh, winter party season fa fast approaching, that people now do take a level of responsibility with lateral flow tests in terms of testing themselves uh, when they know that they are going out into group settings or going out uh, with colleagues or friends into uh, settings where there are large groups of other people uh, and also to use the lateral flow devices within a few days of attending such settings um, as well. Thank you. And my second question of the 22 people tested so far, you said all the results have come back negative. How many is that exactly of the 22? Uh, I think uh, everybody except uh, three people um, have been uh, tested and the other three, uh, I believe, have left the island. Thank you. OK, thank you very much, um, Leanne. So I'll now move, uh, please, to BBC, uh, Catherine Nicholl. On Friday, we heard that they were going to relax the testing regime for people going into hospital appointments at Nobles. Is that now going to be backtracked on? Or are people going to be expected to take PCR tests before and isolate for three days again before they go attend their appointments? And also, will this, at this stage, will there be any changes to visiting at the hospital and visiting at care homes? Are there any more restrictions coming in there? Uh, well, so all uh, specific details, but we are mandating now that people wear a mask in healthcare settings uh, and the exact implications from that will be made clear uh, in the next few days uh, and will confirm with Manx Care whether there will be any changes to the testing arrangements that currently uh, exist. Thank you very much. And then Rob Pritchard from Manx Radio. 
Pastor my Chief Minister, just for clarity, a two-pronged question to start with. You say uh, it would be immediate isolation for anyone who's suspected or confirmed to have the Omicron variant. First off, how do you suspect someone has that variant? And also, how are you going to isolate them effectively, given the fact that government and public health have previously stated repeatedly that the likes of sequencing can take around seven days to complete? So, um, well, I mean, we just use that word suspected if indeed we believe there is any reason for us to be on a heightened alert with the, uh, with the, with the particular individual. Um, and we are looking now at speeding up the PCR test result uh, program so that, that uh, the PCR analysis that's actually taking place on the Isle of Man, uh, we hope within the next few days should actually be able to identify the Omicron uh, variant. Um, and therefore, this sort of length of time that, that you were talking about shouldn't, shouldn't apply. Uh, and I also want to be clear now that anybody who tests uh, positive uh, for this new variant um, will immediately have to self-isolate, as will their household have to self-isolate. OK, and um, you mentioned that it's expected to wear a mask in public settings, including schools. But why has that not been possibly mandated in schools when the likes of the public health surveillance reports keep stating each week that the, uh, the largest number of confirmed cases continue to be in either the 10 to 14 age group or the 15 to 19 age group? So, you know, we, we want to work with uh, the community to... Uh, ensure that people take, take the right levels of um, responsibility. Uh, Julie Edge, the Education Minister, will be uh, on the radio tomorrow morning explaining in a little more detail how uh, she envisages the expectation level now to work um, in our schools. But I think it is important that um, we try and work together as a community. I've always said that uh, full legal enforcement uh, is a last resort um, for the government. Uh, today's messaging is about raising the awareness now of this increased threat. It is about protecting uh, our entry points where we see the most uh, or the biggest level of threat uh, coming from an exposure. And it is about now telling the public that we do expect people to wear a mask uh, in these uh, public uh, settings. Uh, and there is some work to do now as we, we move forward in the next few days with business, uh, particularly with retail premises, um, but also with the school setting as well to make sure that everybody uh, is adhering and fulfilling um, what, what we want, which is really to try and mitigate as much as possible now uh, the opportunity for this new variant um, to spread within the community. And when you mentioned the lateral flow test for those who travel to the island from the common travel area, you speak about adhering to the rules. How are you going to make sure that people are taking those lateral flow tests? Because the data is compiled differently to PCR tests. Yeah, you're right. So uh, people will be required to declare on their landing forms that they are aware of this requirement and that it is their intention to undertake a, piece, uh, an, a lateral flow test within 12 hours of uh, arriving um, on the Isle of Man. And we are working uh, as to how we can and find an electronic uh, system capable of letting us know that those individuals have, in fact, undertaken uh, that lateral flow test. But to a large degree, with any of these uh, declarations that you make on official forms, there is a, uh, an element of trust that we are... Um, undertaking with with the individual and of course if that trust is broken then we will seek uh, remedial measures to be able to take that individual uh, or persons um, to task. How long would it take to have that system in place then to be able to effectively track people taking lateral flow tests? Well we, we, we will have this in place in terms of the landing forms by 4am on Tuesday morning um, and then we'll be working over the next few days to see how we can, can best enhance our follow-up uh, measures around this. But again, you know, this is another step forward to protect the entry point uh, for, for this new variant, which is the borders. So firstly, international travellers now have this mandatory requirement to self-isolate um, and will have to have a test 48 hours after arriving on the island and will only be free to go once that test result um, is through. Secondly, those travellers coming from within the common travel area 
uh, now will have to declare their understanding that they have to undertake a lateral flow device test. Uh, and we will work on the uh, follow-up measures uh, around that, but that declaration will be in place for 4 a.m. Um, on Tuesday. And then, of course, to further try and mitigate uh, this variant taking hold in the island, we're asking the public to be operating at a higher level of alertness and to um, undertake mask wearing uh, as much as possible uh, expected in a whole host of settings, including retail premises and, and public environments. Uh, just, just, one, just one final query, if I may. Uh, just with regards to booster vaccines, we've already seen the numbers of missed booster appointments. Is now not the right time to start opening up the likes of booster vaccines to more age groups for those to be able to take up those booster vaccines should they want to, to increase protection? Uh, uh, well, we've got Henrietta with us. Henrietta, I know you're sitting on the vaccination board. Would you like to take that question? All of the issues that you've just alluded to there are currently being considered by the Joint Committee on Vaccination and Immunisation, and they are very shortly going to formulate that as a recommendation. So I think we will be seeing updated guidance around the age groups and how we should work through those. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Rob. Now, um, I'll go back to um, Leanne Cook from 3FM. Leanne, have you got a further question? I'm just having a look. I asked how many of the 22 tested. I was going to ask if there's a contingency in place of one person test positive, but you've covered that. I was going to ask the Director of Public Health, actually, um, if you could tell us anything more about the new variant for those. Obviously, it's a new variant. It's quite concerning. Just for the general public, if you've got any more information, that would be my only further question. Yes, would you like me to take that? Yeah. Yes, please. Yeah. Um, yes, this is an area where we currently have more known unknowns than actual knowns. What we do know is that this mutation, Omicron, has about 52 changes in it, mutations in it, 32 of which are actually on the spike protein. And the reason why that is worrying is because that is the protein that the virus uses to get into and infect cells. And it's also the bit on the virus that the vaccines target. So the worry from that is that Omicron will be more infective and also evade a lot of the protection from the vaccines. It probably won't evade all the protection, so we'll probably still be in a position where people who are fully vaccinated do have protection against more serious illness, but we don't know quite to what extent that will be the case yet. Um, the other thing that's worrying about it is the speed with which it is taking off in South Africa, because South Africa is just coming out of a wave of high levels of infection with Delta. So the worry there is that what we think may be happening is that people who've only recently got over an infection with Delta are now being infected with Omicron. Again, we don't actually know that from real world data yet. It just looks like that may be the case. But those are the reasons why we're very concerned about this variant and why we're taking the actions across numerous countries, in fact, really not to try and guarantee that we don't get Omicron coming onto our shores, because we can't do that. It will get through, um, just as the previous variants have. But what we're trying to do is slow it and buy time so that we can actually understand in more detail what these mutations mean in terms of how the virus is going to behave and how it's going to um, affect vaccine e efficiency. Thank you. And Henrietta, would you also like just to um, tell everybody uh, listening what we might might expect in the coming days from the JVCI and the uh, vaccine programme itself in terms of uh, uptake and boosters, etc.? Yeah, 
Yes. So although we're concerned that the vaccines may not be as effective against this variant, it is pretty certain that they will still be useful against the variant. So we absolutely mustn't interpret this to mean that the vaccines don't work anymore. And if you're due a booster, you know, don't bother because it won't help. It very much will. So as the Chief Minister said earlier, the vaccines remain the strongest pillar in our defences against all variants. So everybody who is included in the current booster programme, we would stress, please come forward and have your booster as soon as you're invited for it. JCVI have been working across this weekend, including up until really as we're speaking, um, looking at what we should do in terms of expanding the booster programme and potentially expanding um, further doses in the younger age groups, the children and young people. So that recommendation is being formulated right now and we expect to see guidance coming out of that very soon. And once we get that, we will expect to alter our vaccine programme on Ireland to reflect that new guidance. Thank you. Uh, yes, Catherine Nicholl from BBC. So a quick question for Dr. Ewart. Um, we know it's, it's, it's a fairly new variant. It's only just been found in the UK, but the UK is saying they're, they're expecting to find more cases. What is the likelihood that it's already here? That's difficult to say. Obviously, it's encouraging that the people we know who've come in from Southern Africa, um, those that remain on the island, have been tested and have been negative, negative for COVID. Um, but it will get here eventually, just as all the preceding variants have, including Delta. Um, so we know that that will happen. Um, obviously, what we have on island built into our PCR testing capacity is the ability to do genotyping for those variants that are currently known. So the issue there is that if we find a positive PCR in the lab where we are not able to pick up the genotype, that actually increases the risk that that may be Omicron. And obviously, that's where our link into Collindale for the full sequencing um, becomes so valuable. OK, is there any further questions from the press? Uh, yes, please, Chief Minister. Um, just for a bit, um, some clarity with regarding residents travelling to the UK uh, under the new rules. Uh, what uh, conversations are being had with the likes of health authorities in the UK to make sure those travelling over are signposted well enough to be able to get their tests on arrival in good time? Uh, there is no uh, mandatory requirement for travellers within the common travel area, i.e. leaving from the Isle of Man, to have a test when arriving in the UK. We have simply changed our process for people returning to the island or coming to the island from the common travel area, whereby we are asking people coming to the island to uh, quantify and confirm to us that they understand that they must take a lateral flow test within 12 hours of arrival uh, on, on our island, um, just to confirm, you do not have to undertake a test if you're travelling from here to the United Kingdom or anywhere within the common travel area. Thank you. Any further questions? OK, so I just wanted to confirm then uh, the key messages today are around travel for international Travellers arriving onto the island, the requirement to have a test 48 hours after arrival. And for everybody travelling to the Isle of Man from the common travel area, we are now asking you to commit to undertaking a lateral flow test within 12 hours of arrival on our island. All technical details around these requirements will be published in the next few hours and day or so. I also wanted to finish by reminding you now the key message is that from 4 a.m. on Tuesday morning, it will be mandatory to wear a face covering on public transport, including on the ferry and aircraft and in all health and social care settings. Indeed, we would ask everyone to take steps to adhere to this immediately. In other settings, particularly retail premises, shops and lifestyle settings and in schools, the government is now expecting everyone to wear a mask. We do not want to make 
The non-wearing of masks is a criminal offence, but we will legislate further if we need to. For now, we ask everyone to wear them in these indoor public settings. Like the UK, we will not at this stage be insisting on further measures in hospitality. And of course, level two means we are asking everyone to increase their use of lateral flow tests, especially before attending events or gatherings. Finally, there will be a change in our position around positive PCR test results that are suspected or confirmed as Omicron. In these instances, the whole household must immediately isolate for 10 days. Overall, these measures are proportionate, realistic and targeted to identify and mitigate, mitigate against Omicron until we know more about the variant, which I hope we will in the next three to four weeks. It is my hope that these measures will be successful and that the island will work together as a community to undertake the right level of preventative measures to mitigate against the rapid spread of this variant. However, we are prepared to go further and harder with legally enforceable measures if they are needed for the greater protection of public health. There will be more on this in the coming days, but the message is simple. Please take up the offer of a vaccine or booster when you are contacted. It is the best step that you can take to protect yourself, protect your loved ones and protect your community. Be aware of others. Take sensible precautions. If you're going out, please take a lateral flow test. And in the days afterwards, please, again, take a lateral flow test. Thank you very much indeed for listening tonight. And I look forward to speaking to you again in the near future. Thank you.